Hello again, everyone. Today, I'm going to be sharing my thoughts on another one of the highly requested uh, names in the uranium space, and that is laramide resources. Hey everyone, just quickly, you can read this here or in the description of any video. Just remember, what I do and say here is meant to be a helpful supplement or thought filter for your research, not a replacement for it. I can be wrong, and I'm often quite early, aka wrong for a good while, which is why none of this is ever investment advice. Now, in the interest of full disclosure, I do currently, personally, own shares in Laramide Resources. Now, this is one of my many positions, and it's not a recommendation, because Laramide fits within a set of exposures and within a balanced theme within my portfolio, and even if you agree with my reasons for liking it, it may not be a fit for your portfolio or your view, depending on your other uranium stock. Now, at the time of making this slide, Laramide's market cap is $37 million. And what Laramide owns is a small portfolio of projects, two main ones in the US and then a couple in Australia as well. Um, the ones in the, in the US, it has ISR, uh, an ISR project, and that is the focal point, I would call it. And in Australia, it has a PEA stage um, conventional mine, which is where the bulk of the defined uh, value could be seen. Now I'm going to start this video by saying that I'm aware that people have, some people have serious concerns about the location of some of this, these companies' projects, principally the US ISR uh, project that is their main attraction in the US. And this is a concern that is serious enough to put it on some people's no touch list. Now, if you are going to consider Laramide, be sure to take a look at this and familiarize yourself with the situation in detail. But how I'm going to proceed here is I'm going to frame the video in, I'm going to go through the path that I hope the company will take and follow the thesis and explain the purposes that this company serves for me. And then afterwards, I'm going to go through the risks again. Okay, so my thesis begins with the point that in an interview not too long ago, uh, the CEO of Laramide, Mark Henderson, said that they could go into production via their US ISR asset at about $40 uranium in 2020. Now, this production would be US-based um, and would not require significant capex, approximately 35 million, which they could finance fairly easily. Now, this is not enough to make a huge dent in the market, um, but it's enough to provide the company with cash flow. Now, the two things that this does for me is first, it provides a near term um, cash flow hedge for if Section 232 uh, goes into effect. Now, again, on 232, I don't like it, but that doesn't mean it can't happen. And the second thing this does for me is allows the rest of the thesis um, with regards to the portfolio of projects that this company has to be advanced without a series of dilutive efforts. Okay, so what is phase two? Well, those familiar with Laramide's IS, US ISR projects are probably aware that they are not limited to 1 million pounds per year of production. They can be increased so that they're over time will be producing 3 million pounds of uranium per year at lower cost in the US, which if 232 happens again, would be very uh, valued by the US utilities. Now, the other thing is the bulk of the value, as I mentioned earlier in this project, comes from their Australian conventional mine, uh, Westmoreland. 
Now this is currently at preliminary economic assessment stage and hopefully the cash flow would allow them to advance that project, which again, the Westmoreland requires higher uranium. So stage one first, cash flow, and then as the uranium price, if it were to increase gradually, could finance stage two. Now, what this means is if successful, they could be a near-term producer that gives them direct leverage to the price upside and growing their production that, that will not require huge capital expenditures. This will also give them to the ability to finance their higher cost or big capex uh, project in the US or in Australia. So this also uh, partially hedges out some of my other positions um, where if there's a near-term price spike and it, I would have leverage to that via their near-term production um, versus what the price might do on the flip side of the spike. Now, like most good investments or potential good investments they come this one comes with questions can they execute the way I envision will they have problems uh, doing that will they have problems advancing and will they get tied up uh, and similarly will they be able to go into production in 2020 now I'll tell you this I don't um, I know that things when it comes to mining um, don't always go on schedule. Of course, I have built in assumptions of things maybe not going exactly optimally, but can they basically go into production soon if the price is adequate? That is what we'll have to see. Now, if I knew that for certain, I would likely own more. Now, if there are significant delays in the US, I projects for Laramide. My hope is that the West Moreland uh, conventional mine in Australia should keep its value and should provide its own type of leverage to the increasing price of uranium. Now, it should do this because it is a project and it does have a net present value significantly higher than the market cap. If both are able to come online, that end Westmoreland and the USISR, then I expect the stock will do significantly better than some other alternatives. However, it is higher risk and on, on the ISR project and the Westmoreland project is a bit further out. So there's two projects, two different risks. Now, what could happen if things go against what I the way I think they will. Well, this company does have some borrowing and debt agreements. So if the price of uranium were to bleed lower for an extended period of time, that could be a tough pill to swallow, I guess, for this one. Because in that scenario, their debt would be draining. The equity price would probably go be uh, dragged down, meaning that they would have to probably eventually, if they couldn't extend the debt, finance it by equity, and that would be a big, significant, could be a big chunk of the value that gets diluted away as a percentage of the market cap, because they're already pretty small. So also, the same thing could happen if they get delayed much beyond their 2020 production timeline. Things could, drain away in terms of uh, the value and needing to finance, it could go rather poorly. In conclusion, my ownership of Laramide is due to it fit, filling a need in my portfolio. Now, the technical reports on many of these projects are not adva as advanced as I'd prefer. That being said, I know there's other companies that say they are ready to go into production that 
um, also don't have as uh, advanced of a technical report as I would like. Um, and that is my understanding is that's the nature of ISR. You, they don't, you don't need a definitive uh, feasibility study all the time um, because of the low capex. Um, now, my investment thesis um, would be quite damaged um, if the interview with the CEO is completely incorrect. Now, the CEO has experience, and I would think that he would know what he's doing. Um, but that is why I have a diversified set of positions, even within the uranium space. That's it for today. I would like to thank everyone who got to this point for watching, and I would I hope you enjoyed, and I hope to see you next time. And until then, enjoy.